what is a new belief you've obtained that you didn't have a week ago or maybe a month ago that has completely changed the way you approach your business right now? I need to only go into business with people that I truly can be friends with and I can truly have a good time with outside of business. If there's any sort of weird animosity or if there's any sort of weird dynamic in the situation, it is not going to last. It just won't last. And um, that just comes through experience, but I just So how do you balance that with like, I see a lot of people that they choose the convenient option instead of a person who's actually right for the role. And what I mean by that is like, like let's start a business. Okay, we need a marketer. And they just use their best friend that's like, hey, do you want to do the marketing? But they don't have the heart in it. I don't find people who are my friends first. I find people who I think would be good for the business okay. first. And if they end up being good fit for that, then I hire them. But if they even, don't. Yeah, but even if they're quality and you don't vibe with them, it's not worth it. It's not worth it because it won't last. Yeah, it is quality a marriage. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything if you can't work with the other person. Because working with the other person is the only thing that takes the company forward. So you and Musa get along pretty well? Yeah. Nice. And so Yeah, we're just, like... Boys, because we're also in very similar industries. Yeah. Like TikTok and YouTube. Like we are very good friends. And same with Aleem, like very good friends. So if you get along with someone, it will last. It's as simple as that. If you had to talk to a person who doesn't has never started a software company before, what would you tell them? Find a product that will solve the problem that you are going through. And if the problem is in a market that a lot of people are in, then chances are that it's a very good product. But if it's a problem in a very niche market, then I don't think you should start it. Second... When I mean very niche, I mean like a very, very niche. Even a million people is a good enough business if you can attract all those million people. Two is you need to be able to get eyes. If you don't think you can get eyes before you start the company, don't start the company. And if you believe that there's a way you can get eyes, but you don't have it yet, do everything in your power to. Because those two things put together are what make a million, hundred million, billion dollar company. Let's say you are a developer or you're a technical person. And you don't know how to get eyes. What do you do? Okay, so... This is what you do. A lot of developers or a lot of people on the back end try to reach out to creators by just cold DMing them and being like, hey, I have an idea for a product. Um, let's work on it together. I get hundreds of those DMs a week. A lot of other people do as well. First, as a developer, the way you're going to get eyes is by partnering with someone who knows how to get eyes, which is a marketer, a creator, etc. But how do you actually get involved with them you can't just cold dm them. that's so boring no one answers cold dms especially if there's someone worth working with they probably get tons so this is what you do you have to get a warm lead to the person and the way to get a warm lead that i've actually done in the past is pay to close mutual money to sweet talk the person into talking to me and that's when i was a bit smaller and i didn't have as much pull into talking with people that's simply what i did and it worked a lot to me meeting cool people Second thing I did is I did this for a little streak of time. Um, I actually sent people DMs where it was like, how much do I need to pay you for an hour of your time? No one sends those types of DMs. Everyone's just like, hey, can I ask you a question? Bro, just ask me the question. I just asked a lot of people, can I pay you for an hour of your time? How much do you want to get paid? And everyone has a price. I have a 100% success rate with that message. 100% success rate. They will name their price. And if you think what you have to offer is worth X amount more times than whatever that price is going to be, you pay that price. You take that risk. You put yourself in a position of now, ooh, I'm a bit deep in now. I have to make this work. I have to convince him. And so let's say someone's 250 bucks for an hour, but you think this is a product that can be worth millions. What is 250 bucks? Pay the 250 bucks. Get on the call with them. Introduce yourself. And then tell them what you think can change their life and your life. And that has that can really work. Like, stop cold DMing people and being like, hey, I think we could do this together. Yeah, think why would they even want to? Like, what do you do for them? Right? Nothing. Whereas if you get something that they trust, to sweet talk them. How do you find someone they trust? Following. Who are they following? Okay. Literally, it's and so just DM, easy. hey, do you know this person pretty well? Hey, do you know this person really well? Um, I'm trying to get in contact with them, and I'll offer you 200 bucks if you manage to make a group chat because I think I have an opportunity that would really benefit him. And they're not getting those messages from anybody else. Of you course like they're, the, not. they're like, uh, okay. But there's not going to be a method. Yeah. You know, like when people yeah. like say to do something and everyone starts doing it, I feel bad for all the inboxes of people <laughs> that are about to get flooded with this. Hey, we already know 99% of people don't take action, right? Yeah, that's very Except true. for all of the people watching. These are action takers. So. Okay, nice. <laughs> but yeah, like that's honestly a way that I've done it. I, can't, I can only speak on really what I've done. So that's what I've done. You've done a lot work. of things very well, dude. So we can I've also we failed at a lot forever. of things. But yeah, I try. I try. <laughs> okay, that's really smart. 
But you're, would, so you can say they can go to them with just an idea, but they have to have the technical skill to Your build it. Your idea needs to be mapped out. Like you need to have an actual vision of what's possible in the space. Like it's like the last step that they would need to do is just say yes. It's like, listen, this is done. Say yes to me. And yeah. this is the thing with Creo. Yeah. If someone, if Creo hadn't existed and it's something to make these types of videos hadn't existed, someone could have gone to someone like me and be like, hey, I have an idea for a video editor that's gonna make it easier for you to make short form videos. This is a demo I've made of what it could look like, but with three months of production, it will be like 10 times better than this. All I need you to do is to get eyes on something like this, and no one's ever done this, we will make hundreds of thousands of dollars. If we don't hit this benchmark by month two, I will leave the company and I will pay you for your time, or I will like give you rights to the company and you can go with another developer that I'll recommend you. You have to be so persistent in your belief. So basically take all the risk, take like, all the risk because risk with like no risk, no reward. Right. But it's not even that it's if I, I was so confident in Creo, I would have done that with someone mm -hmm. if I needed a developer or something, or if I was a developer, you put it on the line, yeah, I would put it on the line because I'm so confident. You need to be so confident. And remember when I went and I talked about gut feeling with my videos, you need to have a gut feeling that this will work. If you even think a little bit of you that this isn't going to work because of this, then either fix it or don't do it. I get so excited just listening to you. I'm just like, <laughs> I just like start nodding my head. It's so, what do you think they should look for in a creator? Like, cause obviously just cause they have a lot of following, a lot of followers, yeah. their idea. Like what are you looking so for as a creator? I got asked this question earlier and it was, what's the difference between audience and influence? Mm. Audience is someone who can get a lot of eyes, but can't change people live can't change people's lives and influence is someone that could send out a message to a hundred people and 90 of those people would change something that, about them. And so you need to look at people that have influence, not just an audience. Moose and I had influence people related to our stories. They related to what we could do. Therefore, when we told them that this was something they should do. They did it because they related to me. I've done this as well. And that's what influence is. And you build influence by building trust with people. So you need to look at only people who have trustworthy brands and don't go around cutting corners in bad ways. You need to look at people that when, they, when you, whenever they post a video, they have comments of people saying, bro, you changed my life, bro. This happened because of you. I have tons of those in all my videos because I actually try when I make my videos. You don't want to go for people who gets millions of views, but no one cares about them. No one cares to take any piece of advice they give. No one cares to change a habit of theirs when they mention it. Influence always over audience. Mm, really concise. Okay. And so you don't think that that, do you think educational creators just have more influence because of that nature of their content? A lot or? of educational creators only have audiences because they just give advice and mm. none of the audience takes it in because they're bullshitters. You can get a lot of views bullshitting. Um, people who are big in education were people like Biaheza who showed you it was possible because he did it himself and he had influence. Biaheza did it almost every video showing you from the ground up that he was like you. And that's what made you trust him to, for example, buy his course or leave a nice message. Because when you saw a video of his, you thought it was possible as well. So by standard, I guess education creators do have more influence because they're teaching directly education. But a lot of education creators are filled with bluff and fluff. And they just have an audience who watches their videos for the controversy or for this and that and then scroll right away. You need to look at people who have influence. The reality of what it takes to be successful and then what people want things to be are like so there's such a big gap between that like this is the set amount of work this is the level of quality you have to expect these are the skills that you need this is the team you need these are the compounding benefits and advantages that you need to, if you want to make a million dollars yeah and some people are like i want to work really hard i want to change the world and be a good person and i'm like i i love that like that's great but also like let's get to the reality of what it takes to get and results you like, know what's interesting be very goal like detail oriented of your at data. one point i was someone who wanted to make money mm -hmm. and then at one point, I'm someone who does make money. And so I know now from just experience, like nothing else, that the way I got to where I am here, I'm not giving like a blueprint right now. All I'm saying is that it was a very variable journey. It was never that I worked every day, 10 hours a day. It was some days I literally worked none and some days I didn't sleep. And so it was a variable journey of just working a lot sometimes, not working a lot sometimes, doing this a lot more. Like I'd solve one specific problem for like a week straight and then I'd never focus on it again. Like, it's not a journey that goes like this. It's like something that goes like a bit like that. And then it goes that like, it's not a blueprint that someone can ever give to you. All right. There's got, there, so there has to be like a subset of people out there that are probably thinking like, Oh, of course his software successful. He had an audience and then like discounting your software success. And I'm like, but then it's like, dude, like you spent 
no one's born with an audience. No one's born exactly. with skills. Like you did the work required to get the skills. You did the work required to get credibility. You did the work required to get the audience. You made all the videos. You posted consistently, came up with the ideas. Then you built an audience and you built a product. And now you can find people At one point, into it. I was a blank canvas. Exactly. And a lot of everyone. So that, should, that should inspire the fuck out of anyone listening to At this. At one point, I was a blank canvas. Everyone starts with a blank canvas. And just canvas. be excited about it. Yeah. And so it's like, how did I make something out of nothing? That's not a miracle. A lot of people actually do it. Whether you think a lot of people say that rich people are in the top 1%. I actually don't believe in percentages simply <laughs> because anybody could do it. And so if everybody did it, it would no longer be a 1% thing. But I know everybody could do it. Most people just don't do the action. M most people don't do the action. that, And that makes it a 1% thing. It makes it because most people don't do the action that it only is 1% of people that do. And action is also finding the information. Yeah. Right. Like. You didn't learn most of the, like you didn't just come up with the stuff. You learned this by, I learned it by you started at videos. 10 years old. Yeah. yeah. Like bro, I started at earlier than 10. I have videos out from when I was eight, seven that I've actually posted on Instagram. I have a video from when I was maybe nine years old That's saying, crazy, I really want to pursue YouTube. YouTube is something that I'm very passionate about. I uttered those words when I was nine, when I was making magic videos on YouTube and those videos are out for everybody to see, but it's just kind of like at the time, by the way, like. I didn't think I was manifesting anything. I just said it because I was a little kid and I like YouTube. But looking back on it now, it's very interesting to see that that was always something that was in the back of my mind. And it just goes back to the fact that like people hear this all the time. And that's why it's kind of annoying for me to say it. But anybody can do it, bro. There's there's no doubt about it. It's just all the information is accessible. You just have to access it and then practice it. Yeah. It's access it and practice it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but... I just want to go back to your product now because yeah. I, I love, I like, like I love talking to you about like motivation, inspiration, mindset stuff. Cause like you just have been in the game for 10 years and it's just sheer determination and excitement for your work. I would love to know what you're like, why do you want a hundred million dollars? What are you gonna do with a hundred million dollars? <laughs> um, I think a hundred million dollars would be nice to have. To be honest, I don't really have like a money goal, like a number that would like set me off to be happy and set me off to be fulfilled. I think what I'm chasing is just like a counter on a screen. Yeah, scoreboard. And it's just like the scoreboard goes yeah. up and it goes mm -hmm. up and it goes up. And it, it makes me more confident every time it goes up. It makes me a bit of a happier person. And um, I was obviously happy before I made money. I don't think money is the direct correlation to happiness. But I really enjoy the game of making money. I love the game of making business. And the reason I love it is because I have times where I'm so stressed, so mm -hmm. upset, so pissed off that something went wrong and I just want to never do anything again. But then I have these blissful moments of like everything's going right. And like the fruits of my labor are here. Look what I've worked towards. And just this, this such like different worlds that you kind of feel in business. And you know what's the craziest thing about business and the thing I love the most is that you can be in those two different worlds in two days. Mm -hmm. On one day, you can be the happiest person. <laughs> yeah. And then on day two, you can be the saddest. And it's like a game of like, how do you not be sad? And how do you be more happy? It's the act of creation where you're probably the most fulfilled. Like at yeah. the end of the day of working 12 hours to build Creo, probably feeling way better about yourself than It's so sick that I have off. like something now that people a lot of people know the word quail and they don't know me and yeah. they don't know Musa. Yeah. And that's the sickest thing in the world. People <laughs> know my company without knowing who owns the company. Yeah. And the fact that I remember our conversation of making this company in an apartment all together is like, this was nothing. Mm -hmm. No one on earth knew what Crayo was. And it was just some kids talking about it in an apartment. And now it's this thing that a lot of people know and they don't know who created it. Okay. So how do we make, how did you make Crayo good enough to get to that point? Well, you had the problems firsthand. Yeah, you had the problem firsthand. The problem that I had firsthand, the distribution, always make a product if you know you have distribution for it. If you don't think you have distribution for it. Go find distribution. Exactly. And honestly, you could be solving a problem that's more useful than Creo. If you don't have distribution, you're not going to make more money because we have distribution. And the only act of making money is getting it in front of people's eyes. Mm -hmm. The less eyes, the less money because it's just a mathematical game. And so... Thankfully, it was a very good pairing because Musa and I had distribution and then there was the back end system on the other end of the team. And so that worked very well. And that's something that I'm going to recreate for my next companies. Every single company from now on is going to follow that same formula. And honestly, Creo was just a start simply because it's a problem I had, but I think I could make companies now that shift the market even more. Like I'm going to start a company and 
actively we're working on companies that are going to change like the market like it's going to be something that just people use like zoom people use zoom to talk online people use google Meet to talk online i'm going to make something like that for the markets that i like and it's going to solve a problem do you read a lot of books or anything no okay do you have like i've only read one book in my life <laughs> how to win friends and influence people by nice. okay, that's a good one it's a good one okay so then do you have like sayings or catchphrases or wisdom that you like follow or is it just wake up, do the shit, dude? Listen, like, <laughs> I don't. I wish I did because whenever I listen to people who have like these words yeah, of wisdom like, they wow. give, it's like so sick. I wouldn't be able to say those <laughs> yeah. words of influence. Um, I don't. I just get up and do it. And I, you know what's interesting is all my notes. Whenever I hear a word of wisdom or influence, I write it down because I, I read it to myself before I sleep because it's just something I want to okay, implant in my brain. So I think it's very good to know these like catchphrases and words of influence because it's something that is deep in your subconscious. Yeah. These people that can just bring out these insane quotes and sayings have that idea deep in their subconscious. They really believe in it because if you believe in it, you're going to store it in your memory and they do because they can just rip it out when someone asks them. So what I try to do is whenever I hear something that impacts me in some way, because I've just seen random TikTok videos or podcasts where someone says a little sentence that kind of changes the way I view something or kind of makes me like, bro, that's like so true. And I write that down and I read it over and over before I sleep pretty much every night. I'm not going to lie. And then simply because I think eventually that can get implanted in my brain and I can be one of the people that has those quotes. Because if I have that implanted in my brain, I will act accordingly to what those said. Mm. And that would just make me better. Interesting. Explain how you perceive self con or subconscious. <sighs> Why is it important for your subconscious to have that? I think it's important because you, most of the actions you go through on your daily basis are based off your subconscious of what you've learned in the past. You're learning new things every day, but the way you interact with people is the way you were raised to interact with people. That's in your subconscious. Some people are subconsciously rude because they grew up in that environment, so they'll be rude to you. They don't know why they're doing it, but they are. So if I'm, sub so if I'm subconsciously getting these good sayings in my head, understanding deep topics in my head, whether I remember it, if I take the time to study it for a few weeks, months, whatever, and then eventually I quote unquote forget about it on my daily memory, it will now be implanted in my head that I'm going to act like that person. That's what I believe because I've actually tried it. Like I've reread sayings a ton and it's kind of like implanted in my head. So you're like programming yourself basically. Yeah. Like I actually, I want to pull up just one saying okay, do that I had on my notes. Read them all if you want. Because this one was really interesting to me. Um, so, here. So, there was one where it was like the source of insecurity um, is comparing your behind the scenes moments to everyone's highlights. Like, that's a lot of people's source of insecurity. Like, <laughs> everyone who watches this podcast knows that feeling. <laughs> like, you always yeah. compare what's really going on in the trenches with you to what people show online. Right. And that just kind of put it in perspective to me just one time when I read it. Another one was kind of a lot deeper. And it was if a bird lands on a branch, does it trust the branch or does it trust its wings? I've seen many branches break when birds are on them. And the bird never falls and dies. It always flies off because it trusts its wings. And so that's something I I've like been that. reading every night after I heard it and just planting it in my subconscious. And I think it's made me trust myself more and more that I'm going to trust my wings. Like it sounds a bit like stupid, and like weird to say, but like I'm going to trust myself more and more because no matter what happens, if everything goes to shit, I will still trust in myself to bring it back. And I think that's what that saying like represents. Like, like you know you are capable of doing the work required to succeed. 100%. And that you will figure it out. Yeah. You will yeah. That's the that, that's the confidence thing. And like, I just have tons of tons and tons of these in my phone. And you do them for, before bed? And before Why bed. Why before bed? Because I dream about them. So, I read them before bed and it kind of implants and somehow some way like the dream kind of revolves around it. It's not like it's weird. I don't know, but huh. it happens. And so you um, think just right before bed, then you're dreaming about it, which means you're like actually getting double. <laughs> you're thinking yeah. about it even more. And sometimes I even write down quotes of things I realize myself. So there was someone, a friend of mine that said that he's in a war every day with people who don't even know he exists and don't even think of him on a daily basis. And I'm like, damn, like that's, that's very true yeah i am in war every day like i'm fighting against you and you probably don't know i'm doing it <laughs> i'm trying to be better than you every yeah. day and you probably don't even realize i am you probably think i'm not even thinking about you but i'm in a war against you every single day i'm trying to be better than you i'm trying to figure out how you did what you did to be better and you probably don't even know it you're like 
ignorance is bliss on your own, just wandering off. And I'm like in a war here trying to become better than you. And I realized that I wrote it down and I read that as well every night because it's like, it's very true. Like I am in a war every day and I don't want to forget that because people are in a war against me every day, whether I know it or not. Someone's trying to comfort what I have and they're talking with their friends in private like I do. And they're going ahead and trying to like figure out ways to get ahead of me and studying my methods. And I know I'm doing it for other people. People are doing it for me. The zero sum game. It is competitive. It's war. As yeah. much as we like to be friendly, it's, it's war. very much so war. And so that's why, like, <laughs> I've had to, like, grow up also a bit quicker from, like, fi- like last time I was 15 and now I'm 17. But I feel like I've grown way more than any oh, 15 yeah. to 17-year-old would in that time span. It's simply because I've been through, like, so many things in business now. Like, in the last year and a half, my life has gone from pretty normal to very abnormal. And so I've had to adjust very quickly as well. And so I've kind of added a lot of shields, taken out a lot of things. Do you things. feel like you're, this is just going to, I know you don't feel this way at all, but do you feel like you're wasting your child? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm having the best time of my life. <laughs> yeah. And the reason for this, actually an interesting question you just asked me. And the reason for this is because a lot of people don't have friends. They don't have close friends. They only have business friends, people they talk to on the surface level about business. And the reason I don't think I'm wasting my childhood is because I still have the very close friends that I grew up with since I was three. And I said this on a podcast um, before, but there's only two times you can really make friends in your life. One, it's at school when no one has expectations of who you are and you're there because you genuinely like the person. And two is when you're coming up in business and everyone is there on the grind together. And those are the two times I think you can really make the best friends in your life. And I've gone through those two times <laughs> right now. I think I, I'm going to go through new starting points in new businesses where I'll make new friends. Yeah. But like, cycle. I think that's like a good thing to keep in the back of my head that like, bro, I met you for the first time when I was coming up. Like my brand was not a thing. This is what jump started it all. And so like someone like you, I always message you for advice, et cetera, because you're someone that I trusted when I was smaller. And so, like I said, only two times I think you can really make trustworthy people. I'm sure there's like abnormalities to that and you'll make friends, whatnot. But I think those are two very impactful times mm-hmm. in your life. 100%. Since we, by the way, how we got in contact is you literally just DM'd me and you said, bro, I'm going to have your most popular podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, then it's just immediately what you've done. Yep. And then my sister, I didn't even see it. My yep, sister saw it and then d- texted me like, hey, there's an interesting DM from someone. You should see it. Didn't believe you. But then you linked all of it. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. And then I just looked into you like, okay, it seems legit. And then within, what, a week, you were from Cyprus to America for the first time in oh. Arizona at 15. Yeah, like, <laughs> I knew that's when I wanted to start the brand. Mm-hmm. And I knew I wasn't going to start the brand until I had a push from someone else that showed people my life. Because I wasn't going <laughs> to... You, you used me, bro. <laughs> I wasn't going to go through the basic blueprint everyone else does where they grind from zero, zero, zero. Yeah. I had an interesting story to tell. So why not tell it in front of a big audience first? So I reached out to you and I knew it would hit because I knew my so- story was very, very abnormal. And so I messaged you and I sent you all the references. I was very quick, concise. Um, and then your assistant saw it and I freaked out when your assistant saw it because like I'm, d- I'm a step closer now. Yeah. And then you messaged me from like your account. You went on the account uh-huh. and then you gave me your number. And then I was like, this is getting closer, closer, closer. And then when I was, when I was at the desk for the podcast, I was shaking. And I was like, <laughs> this is real now. Like, I can't fumble it up. Then I like, I stumbled a few times in that podcast. I was nervous or whatnot, but that was like the introduction to everything. I just love that it was intentional. Like you literally were like, I need a launch pad. Like I need like a platform to like yeah. bring me, introduce me to the world. And then once I have that, then I can go wild. You know, what's funny is I tested out before I posted a couple of videos and they didn't do well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to try launching myself first and then posting. And you videos. reset. Delete so I deleted everything. the other yeah. channel. I went on yours and then I posted a video and then my brand was what it was. I just trial and mm-hmm. aired it. Dude, that's crazy. You did have a little bit of a Twitter audience, which probably helps yeah. a little bit, but yeah. still, I, that's such a smart strategy. And just shout out to your outreach message, dude. It was <laughs> like, I'm going to have your most popular podcast. I'm this years old. This is what I've done. Proof. Let me know when we can do Look it. Look where we are now. Yeah, a million yeah. dollars a And it wasn't later. some, hey, Brett, love your content. Think you have a really good podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Complimenting me for six paragraphs. Then you just, to the point, you were about it. And obviously you weren't, a lot of people lack self-awareness, but you were like the real deal. So it's cool. And now look at you, bro. Like, it's crazy what you've done just a year and a half since then. <laughs> almost a million dollars a month in business revenue now. Hopefully. With a, with a 50 million, $100 million business exit, just around, like software exit right around the corner. Hopefully dude. we run this back next year and I'm going to come. <laughs> You're going to be a billionaire yeah. by then, dude. <laughs> <sighs> oh dude run up the scoreboard yeah run keep up us updated scoreboard. thank you for coming back and give us this year's update yes, sir. ton of learnings ton of lessons in here 
bro keep crushing it let's go great pod